Gophers or Mavs? It's Frozen Four Week, and we've got two teams squaring off in the semifinals. Gopher junior forward Bryce Brodzinski joins us to tell us why it will be the U of M that gets a shot at the championship. Plus, the Wild continue to work toward home ice advantage in the playoffs, but we'll have to grab some big road wins in the process. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Jim Beam and Better Edge. This is Season 3, Episode 119. Soda Stick is constantly releasing the best homage gear to Minnesota. Pay your respects to ODR with an association tee or hoodie, or snake any variety of palm beanies for the below zero temps. There's even a Bar Down Beauties one for you to grab. Code Bar Down Beauties always gets you 15% off all purchases at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition, like chanting let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Remember, drink smart. Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporate Claremont, Kentucky. From New Voice Studios. Oh yeah, you betcha. Let's go to the boat. Just combobulate <laughs> on the spot. Part of the Talk North Podcast Network. Fly out to Russia personally. <laughs> Jesse Pierce. This is off the rails. We're only <laughs> Already. a couple minutes in. Alexis Pearson. We're not going to throw batteries on, on the ice at, you know, Kirill Kaprizov. This is, we're not that crazy. Whoa. Like Bar Down Beauties Podcast. <laughs> Was it about guys getting hammered down low night after night? Uh, it's like <laughs> everyone loves to crap on analytics, but the analytics do not lie here. We are firing Fred at the top of the hour. More hit. It's like T. <laughs> T. Starts now. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Episode 119. That just sounds weird to say, right? Like, it doesn't flow off the tongue, but I'm pretty proud of it. That's pretty cool. Episode 119. A uh, lot to talk about and also not a lot to talk about, I guess, because <laughs> we're kind of at that part in the season, the NHL season. Instead, we are going to focus on the Frozen Four. Uh, go for forward Bryce Brodzinski. Heck of a hockey name. Love mm-hmm. that hockey name, by the way. He joins us. Super fun guy. Excited to catch up with him because, Alexis, I'm cheering for the Gophers. Oh, yeah. You win the championship, right? Mostly just to shove it to Dan Myers of the right. Minnesota Wild, but like also I love the Gophers, so there's that. It's about time the Gophers won again, uh, so I, I don't feel bad rooting for them. And uh, yeah, horns down to Mankato. Yep. Um, Mankato we just, just lost a lot of followers, probably. Right? That's fine. Chirpin, I could, Chirpin Duluth. Chirpin Duluth Mankato. hates us. Mankato hates us. North it's Dakota. fine. <laughs> North Dakota hates us. Yeah, we Sorry. made enemies of them last week. Um, no, I, I obviously rooting for the Gophers here to pull it out. First appearance since 2014, so it's been a little while since they've been there, and then obviously a while since they've they've won, um, you know, a lot of championships, and so it would be fun to see them pull it off. And like we talk about with Bryce, you know, it's their season could have very easily gone South when LaFontaine went to the NHL and everybody was talking about that when it happened, like, Oh my God, like th- this literally screws over the Gophers. Um, and, and no, you know, no fault to LaFontaine. He did what he thought was best for his career. And then that's all yeah. fine and well. And that's what happens uh, at the college level from time to time. Um, but the Gophers were able to turn it around and really pull it together and put together a really good season. So the fact that they're even in the frozen four is kind of miraculous in itself. And it would be really cool to top it off with uh, with the championship. Those banners at Mariucci getting a little dusty for my yeah. liking. So let's freshen them up. <laughs> uh, you know, jokes aside, sure. It'd be great for my casings to win because it's still a Minnesota <laughs> team. All right. Yeah. I will cheer. I'll hop on that wagon real fast. As long as it's a Minnesota team over anybody else, I'll take it. But at the end of the day, I'm rooting for the Gophers. (laughs) And personally, I don't envy either one of those teams having to face what will likely be Michigan in the finals. That is a powerhouse team. But either way, go Gophers first, go Mavs second. (laughs) Um, Again, Bryce Brodzinski joining us from the Gophers coming up uh, to, uh, to educate us there. Let's shift back over to what we could probably talk about in the NHL. Yes, Minnesota's winning streak came to an end. It's going to happen. And the amount of people I saw like <laughs> hitting the panic button after an overtime loss I know. to Pittsburgh, like, give me a break. It's good. You know what? They're probably going to lose again. Not in a row. I mean, they might even go on a little slump. Who knows? Yeah. It's fine guys. Let's all collectively take a breath. Yep. Um, you know, it was, it was a decent, it was sloppy. It is what it is. Check out Alexis's breakdown of that. Um, you know, but the more important thing for the wild to get these wins, to get these point Alexis is that, uh, that need for home ice advantage. I don't even call it a want. I call it mm, a need because okay. this year's, I mean, this year's XL energy crowd has been 
like nothing I've ever really seen before. Mm -hmm. I've covered this team for six years, obviously the past two years aside, um, the crowd is just so much more into it. I think you have guys like Kirill Kaprizov, obviously Mm -hmm. to credit for that, Kevin Fiala, getting people in Matt Boldy, um, and that guy, Marc-Andre Fleury Mm -hmm. as well. So, I mean, I think that home ice really is going to mean everything to Minnesota. So that to me is, is why you need to get those points is to keep that second slot in the central. Yeah, I go back and forth on this. And it's funny because Jesse and I, without realizing that Jesse had already put this in the rundown for the day, I emailed her last night and was like, I think we should talk about this. And she's like, one <laughs> step ahead of you, because everyone seems to be talking about this right now. And I was talking with somebody about this just this weekend. And the fact that the Stanley Cup has been one on the road, like majority of the past, like 10 years or so, it's been one on the road um, and, and stuff like that. And then just talking about like, how important is home ice advantage? Is it better to not have the distractions and start on the road, like what is ultimately, you know, the, the best situation. And I really think it depends on the team. Obviously it depends on who your opponent is. There's a lot of factors that go into it. And I think at the end of the day, I've talked about this before, but I'm kind of like at the point in my life as a sports fan where it's like, I don't care where you play, who you play, just go win. Like, that's all that, you know, I just need you to go win. that easy. Just like win. Like, I'm not saying it's on. easy. I'm just saying no more excuses. I don't care where you're playing, who you're playing, just get the job done. But to your point, Jesse, the wild fans this season, I really feel like have adopted and wild fans have always been great. So this isn't to say that wild fans in seasons past have have been bad fans, but they really seem to adopted what the Minnesota wild have shifted into in their culture, which is stand up for each other. Don't back down, leave it all out, out on the ice kind of culture. And it seems like wild fans have become those kind of fans as well. I even, I talked about this a little bit in my breakdown of the penguins game, but even that game that game was intense. There was a lot going on. There was a lot of goals scored. Injuries were happening. There was some quote unquote bad calls, according to Dean Evison and the fans and all that stuff. And the fans were getting into it. I mean, if they see a player get hit, they're getting up and getting in the opponent's face. If they think it's a bad call, they're on their feet yelling They're, You know, I just think that and wild fans or wild players and Dean have said time and time again, this season to the point where I don't even think they're trying to kiss ass anymore. They literally truly feel like playing in front of their home fans is a major advantage to them. So I think it would be huge for the wild um, agreeing with you, Jesse here to get that home ice advantage. Um, and I think the fans deserve it too. So if you're not going to do it for yourself, do it for your fans um, who, who cheered you on all season and, uh, and try to get that home ice advantage and get a couple wins early in a playoff series. And selfishly, I just want to have more games in yes. my belt for the playoffs. Money. So if you do it at <laughs> home, I can just cover more games. So we love that for me. Um, no, I mean, in the final part about the fans too, what I really love seeing is everybody on their feet for like the final minute. You saw that in overtime again, you've just seen, and I, I know, I, I know it's because of Caprice off, right? I know it's because <laughs> of the electric players, 100%, yeah. but also I think it's just, it's because it's a different, it has just a different vibe around this team. Mm -hmm. Like you are excited. You're back into it. You've re-engaged this Minnesota wild fan base, which for so long. And again, no slight, I think here in the state of hockey, we take it for granted, right? Like, Mm -hmm. Oh, it's just hockey. And we know our hockey and, and yada, yada. And that's all fine and well. But now it's like, fans are like, we know our hockey. We're so (laughs) into it again. Like, it's just, it's a really, really cool, cool thing. Um, and yes, I mean, everybody will say that about home ice, but truly, I don't think you have many other opponents saying, yes, that building's hard to play in. Yes. We have a tough time there. And you hear that from nearly every single opponent in the national hockey league. I mean, Pittsburgh has had maybe the best outcomes in, in St. Paul and they're six, six and one. So I mean, seven, six and one now considering the win, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough, it truly is a tough building where Mm -hmm. you don't necessarily get that around the league. So I love it. Minnesota hitting the road after getting uh, seven wins on a nine game homestand, heck of a homestand road woes, Alexis, do you Mm -hmm. think it's going to be difficult uh coming up here for Minnesota because they got a back-to-back this week and mm-hmm. as always we're recording on a Friday how do you think they're going to fare on the road before they they come back and and play a you know one off two off here in in St. Paul I do think this is going to be probably the toughest stretch of the season for the wild, to be honest with you. And I'm including that in that slump they went on, you know, in, uh, what was that February? Um, so I, I really think that they're going to play. I mean, we've already look at the homestand that they went on. How many of those games went to freaking overtime? They're one goal mm-hmm. games, even like when they shot out Vegas, four. That was, there were four overtimes four four overtime for Jesse. <laughs> it's fine. Nobody cares. Even <laughs> Vegas, you know, at the beginning of uh, that homestand, they won three to nothing. That was a close game, even though they got a shutout in that game. So it's like, they've been playing in some really close games at home 
And now they're going to play some very, very good teams down the stretch here on the road. And we saw in the Pittsburgh game, a couple of players go down due to injury. It sounds like maybe Merrill is the only one that is cause for concern, but players are banged up right now, whether they're going to keep playing uh, or be pulled out of the lineup or not players are banged up and that's going to cause, you know, the wild to maybe play their game a little bit differently for better, or for worse. Um, and you might see them running out of gas, um, you know, towards the end of games a little bit more than we've seen before. And this is across the board for every team at this point in the season. I'm not, I'm not saying the wild are falling off the wagon or all, or any of that stuff, but that's just Don't what you panic. see. Do not, not panic. panic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, that's just what you see at this point in the season. So it's going to a be a really good test. Cause you're going to play some good teams and some teams who you might match up with in the playoffs this season, uh, depending on who you get in that first round and if you end up advancing or not. Um, and second of all, um, it's going to, you're going to see a lot of playoff hockey like games down the stretch, and now they're going to be on the road. So it's going to be a good test to see uh, how much gas left in the tank. The Minnesota wild have, it'll be a good test to see how cam Talbot and flurry get their goaltending duty split up and how they handle that heading into the postseason. So a lot to pay attention to down the stretch, but yes, wild fans, please don't lose your minds. If they lose a game or two down the stretch here, the wild are going to make the playoffs. Like we talked about just moments ago. Now it's really up to, can they get that home ice advantage or not? Um, and if they don't, it's not the end of the world. This is a very good hockey team. And I'm really excited to see how they close out the season here and, uh, head into the playoffs shortly back to backs on tap this weekend, Carolina and Washington. Those are tough. Then they're on the road in Nashville and St. Louis. Louis. They face Nashville (laughs) twice, two times this month and uh, St. Louis twice this month, as well as Colorado to close out the regular season, 16 games remaining. Um, You know, those, those will be big matchups, obviously Mm -hmm. against the Preds and the Blues. So we'll see what happens. That's going to do it for segment one. Um, As always better edge Alexis. I saw that you didn't get one correct in your beat the beauty yesterday and I'm going to bring it up I really did not have a good time mm-hmm. last night somebody tweeted at me they were like guess you got tired of winning and I was like it would appear so like, I yeah, you didn't just lose like you lost like not one correct not one correct to be fair there was a lot of high scoring games in the NHL yeah, on were. Thursday night and I think yes. I took the under on quite a bit of them obviously so um yeah didn't I had a good run um but much like with the wild please don't panic I, I'm gonna come back with the heat <laughs> next week so just stay tuned. I, I pocketed my twelve fifty. I appreciate that. That was yeah, buy yourself a winning of two dollars. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So as always, that's on Better Edge, B E T T U R Edge dot com, where you can play Beat the Butte Tuesdays against me, Jesse. Thursdays against Alexis. Um, and then obviously you can bet on all games. You can bet on the Final Four, which is coming up here. Uh, women's Final Four happening in Minneapolis this weekend. Shout out to the Light Days. Um, yeah, but we don't. We're not a new basketball. I'm gonna. Yeah, Fred, we don't <laughs> have to include that. Not a basketball. <laughs> Uh, Anyways, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Bryce Brzezinski. It's hockey season, baby. And the best way to head into a new season is to be fully equipped with all the merch you need to cheer on your favorite teams. Oh, and some Bardown Beauties merch too, right? Right. We've got you covered. Literally head over to teespring.com where you can find all kinds of custom design Bardown Beauties apparel, plus so much more. Joining us now, the latest Brodzinski to head to the Frozen Four, arguably probably the best Brodzinski, uh, <laughs> go for forward Bryce. Bryce, how are you doing? I'm doing excellent. How are you? I'm good. So yeah, let's just get this out of the way. You said the the better looking of the Brodzinski brothers, probably <laughs> the more skilled too. The younger brother is always the best, the most skilled, right? Well, that's at least what my mom says. So I'll <laughs> take her word for it. <laughs> Does she just tell that to you guys each individually? Probably, like, just, yeah, yeah, like, for sure. She'll never tell us like when we're all in the same room. But we're <laughs> with her that we're her favorite and we're the best player. So. <laughs> at least it was just me and her around I'm the best player so. yeah, I love it I love it well I mean you followed in the footsteps of your dad who played at the U brother Michael played at the U while Johnny and Easton went up to St. Cloud uh what was the decision going into becoming a gopher instead of a husky or even instead of any of the other number of schools that I'm sure you had your choice of yeah so I mean at first I was I was committed to St. Cloud my uh sophomore year of high school and junior year of high school so uh, but when Modsko made the the switch over, it was, I mean, he was, he was a super close family friend. Um, you know, and he coached Johnny and, and Easton for uh, three of his years. And so, uh, I don't know, it was kind of an easy decision because of how close I'd become with him. I mean, when Johnny was there, I was kind of going around in the locker room as a little 10 year old <laughs> buzzing around with me and my cousin in the locker room. So um, yeah, I, I just, I kind of had a relationship with him and I, and I knew his style of play. And um, you know, when he made the switch to Minnesota, he kind of toured me around the facilities and I was like, 
kind of awestruck by this place. And so, uh, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of an easy decision to kind of make the switch because um, of how familiar I was with him and then kind of all the facilities that we have here as well. Well, and how cool is it to, you know, to have three other brothers who've played at the college level and, and, you know, even at the pros and your dad playing, um, you know, college hockey. I mean, it's so rare. I feel like to have that many people in the same family have that much success with the sport. How cool is that to have the role models of your older brothers and your dad to look up to as you, um, kind of entered the hockey scene as well. Yeah, it it was, it was definitely nice having them, especially kind of like with the recruiting process. I remember, like, um, you know, growing up, every, every kid was kind of worried about like, oh, maybe I have to go to this camp to have people see me where, um, you know, I kind of had three older brothers. So I knew something was going to happen eventually <laughs> with just having them as my family members. So, uh, yeah, it was I was super fortunate to have them. I mean, I'm four years younger than than the third oldest brother. So I kind of was the youngest one always getting picked on. And, you know, every time that I, I grew up, I would get a, a hand me down sticker skates that were four years too old. And um, yeah, I, I mean. But once, once they all kind of graduated high school and went into college, I was kind of just entering high school. So I was kind of the lone man at home. So it was kind of nice for a few years just being the, the last hockey player at home. But So um, you didn't have to compete with anybody at the same time, right? You got your own time to shine yeah. once everybody had already moved on to different yeah, stages. Yeah, when they all left, I was kind of the favorite child at home. So, um, yeah, I kind, of, I kind of got everything my senior year and junior year. So when they're all gone. But, uh, yeah, no, it's it's super nice. I mean, during the summers, we were, we're all skating together and, um, you know, training together and stuff. And um, I mean, especially during the summers, though, we're kind of all trying to stay away from hockey as much as we can just golf <laughs> as much. But um, yeah, no, every, every day is kind of hockey at my house. My dad kind of makes it every single day hockey. But um, yeah, no, it, it, I, I was super fortunate to kind of have the family I have. So you know, you're the best you're, looking brother. You claim that you're the favorite child. Who's the best golfer? If you guys spend a lot of time golfing together, who, who's the best golfer between you guys? It, de- it, it depends on the day. <laughs> Um, if my brothers are, are kind of getting my head, my, my second oldest brother, Michael is, is really good at it. I'll miss a putt and he'll, he'll just look at me and kind of fist bump <laughs> knowing I missed the putt. And, uh, you know, when, when I'm golfing with him and, he, and he's getting in my head, I, I'm having a bad day. So the other three are a lot better than me, but, um, you know, you know, when he's nice to me, I think that it is a pretty good <laughs> intention. There you go. I mean, you know, with the brothers sticking on that, uh, I'm surprised you're not a goalie. How many times were you tossed in the net for everybody to <laughs> shoot on as the youngest brother? Because that's that's a rite of passage of the youngest brothers. You have to be the goalie for us. That's actually the craziest thing. I was just talking to my roommate about that the other day. Yeah. I always wanted to be a goalie my whole life. And my dad <laughs> wouldn't let me do it because he didn't want to buy me new gear. He just couldn't get yeah. my brother's old hockey gear. All hey, that stuff's gear. expensive. <laughs> but I was always the mini hockey goalie. I remember this game that me and my brothers used to play. I would have to play a mini hockey goalie and they would do three on O's against me. And I couldn't leave until I got 10 saves in a row. And I would get up to like nine and then I would finally get the 10th one and I'd like celebrate. And then they would score and be like, oh, it didn't count. Like you have to start over again. And then we'd sit there and play mini hockey for four hours. The last <laughs> if you were a goalie, would you be more of an Alex Daylock goalie? Like one that goes out and scores. I mean, do you obviously have the offensive prowess? I got to imagine <laughs> that's more your style, right? Yeah. I mean, probably I'd be kind of an erratic goalie. I don't really like to, <laughs> I, I always talk to our goalie coaches like, Hey, goalie co- goalies are just a little bit too structured. Just kind of let them get in the way of the puck. You don't have to do all this fundamental stuff. And so I think that'd kind of be my style. Just kind of fling my body around, try to get in the way. I love it. You know, speaking of yourself, forget the brothers. Let's talk about Bryce Brodzinski here for a moment. Mr. Hockey, what was that honor like for you? I mean, it's obviously everything here in the state of hockey. You were able to captain Blaine to a third place finish at state too. just go back to that moment in time and how special that was for you in your career. Yeah, that was, that was a really special moment. I mean, I mean, part of my reason that I wanted to go back was just to kind of prove to my brothers that I could do it and they wouldn't do it. I mean, I know you, I know you said, don't talk about my brothers, but it, it's always a competition. In this moment, you can, if it's because yeah. you're better than As them, long as you're making fun of them. Yeah, that's all, yeah. so it, it was always just a, like, hey, I did this and you didn't kind of think so. I mean, it was it was never really my intention going back my senior year to, to win that. It was just kind of to get to the state tournament and win a state championship. But um, yeah, it was a really cool honor. I mean, um, yeah, it was, it was really a once in a lifetime experience. I mean, um, you know, not a lot of kids get that opportunity just to even be there. And, um, it, yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. That whole senior year was, was a really awesome experience. And, um, I, I grew really close with a lot of friends and all of them I still talk to to, to this day. So, um, yeah, high school hockey is, it's, it's a special thing for sure. 
Well, and now you've got a chance to do something cool again at the college level here. The first go for um, Frozen Four appearance since 2014. And uh, you got to go back to the days of Don Lucia when they last won um, something there. How cool is it to be a part of something like this? And how fun has the season been now with the chance to uh, really put an exclamation mark on the season here um, next weekend? Yeah, I mean, the, the season's been a lot of fun. We've had, I mean, we've had a lot of ups and downs, that's for sure. But, um, you know, I think we've just been growing together a lot since the second half started. And, um, you know, we got Justin close in that now and, and we love to get a death and, um, you know, he's somebody that we definitely trust back there. So, um, you know, kind of at the beginning, we were a little, we were, we were a little worried, kind of throwing him out to the wolves there. So, for a minute, so <laughs> we kind of all stuck to the, like the game plan and um, you didn't volunteer to, to go in net instead. You said you wanted I, to be a I goalie. Said, that was if, your chance. If, if two of our goalies get hurt, I'll be the back. Of it. <laughs> but no, the, he, uh, he's, he's an unreal guy. And, um, you know, we, we definitely kind of played a more defensive style when he got a net because we didn't want anything to happen to him. So, um, yeah, we, this second has been awesome with him though. I mean, I, you opened that door. Yeah. Cause I think everybody saw when LaFontaine's, you know, signed and went to, to Carolina, everyone's like, oh no, what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. But really you guys stepped up and are you kind of surprised that the second half ended the way it has considering that adversity you faced there losing your starting goaltender, mm-hmm. uh, to the NHL. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, I don't think our team was really surprised at how good Justin close was going to be. I think kind of more of the hockey world was a little bit surprised. <laughs> Fair. I think, yeah, I think we all, you know, know from practice just how poised he is with the puck. I mean, um, you know, in our last game against Western Michigan, the guy was so calm, like, you know, like a, a bad b- bounce would go right in front of the net and he would just kind of, he would just be smooth with it. He wouldn't like kind of get erratic where some guys would kind of, kind of flail their body around just to try to get in the way. But he's always so smooth and so calm with his motions. And um, yeah, I mean, we, we just, we can tell from practice. I mean, he's, he's an unbelievable goalie and um, he's definitely the goalie that, you see in a shootout and you want to go the other way during practice. So, um, <laughs> yeah, he's not, he's not the guy you want to shoot on in practice. You don't score very often. I mean, you're not going to want to shoot against Dryden McKay either. How are you guys going to solve him when you face Minnesota state for the record? I'm cheering all the way for the Gophers mm-hmm. you know, horns yeah. down. I go want go it. Gophers. I want to yep. see it. Let's go. go. <laughs> sorry, Mankato fans. Mostly not sorry to Dan Myers, but uh, <laughs> anyway, how are you going to solve Dryden McKay and Mike Casey is obviously a very strong club down there at, uh, in Mankato. Yeah, they're, they're a really good team and he's a really good goalie and, um, you know, he's a big guy. So I think if we kind of use our speed and move the puck really quick, get him kind of to move laterally, I think it'll open up a little bit for us. And um, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a really good game. It's going to be a really, really close game. And uh, you know, they're a super defensive team because of, you know, like you said, Mike Hastings is an unbelievable coach and um, yeah, I think it'll be a super defensive game. So, um, you know, kind of just trying to get the opportunity to shoot on him will, will kind of be a challenge. There you, go. you know, speaking of a team like Mankato back in the day, it was, you played for the Gophers and that was kind of it. That was the goal was to go play for the Gophers. And we've talked about this on the podcast a few times about, you know, the, the upcoming of some of these other schools in the, in the area that are becoming these good teams, a team like Mankato or even Bemidji or other schools like that. How cool is it to have, you know, that kind of fun competition in Minnesota where, you know, obviously it's nice to be top dog, but to have all these other schools who kids want to go play for those schools too. And they have just as good a chance to win a championship there as they do with Minnesota. Is, is that kind of fun as someone who plays for the Gophers to know there's all that competition out there at the D one level in Minnesota? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's especially nice playing it for a team in Minnesota because you know, every team's a top team. So you don't have to really go very far to play. Good. So, <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean, you know, with Easton being at St. Cloud too, it's always a cool kind of competition to, to see which teams high rank higher in the, in the standings that week. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's definitely a cool thing with um, all the Minnesota teams, especially, um, you know, since Easton's at St. Cloud, I mean, it's just, it's really cool experience kind of being able to play against these teams every single week. And um, you know, every time we get to the tournament, every single minute Minnesota teams in it, because um, mm-hmm. you know, they're always having really good seasons and really good conferences. So um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really cool. Always playing Minnesota teams. I love it. So final question the biggest, probably the most important question I have for you in this entire podcast, probably the most important question that I will have anybody will have for you ever. How do you solve a Rubik's cube? I hear you are a big Rubik's cube (laughs) guy. I had a little Intel. Can you solve it then? And what is the secret? How fast can you solve it? Tell me about your Rubik's cube. (laughs) It was like my, so it was Johnny was still in college when I first my cousin got me into it. My cousin's really into that kind of stuff. Like the weird, like, Oh, like I know how to solve a Rubik's cube. Like you have to learn how to do this. Like really kind of like, like out of the box things that like you wouldn't think to like do, but he does it. Cause it's like, he thinks it's cool. So he got (laughs) me into it. Yeah. Yeah, So he got me into it when I was like probably 13, 14 years old. 
and uh we were like super into it like wanted to go to all these like rubik's cube competitions <laughs> like always watch youtube videos on it um but yeah i learned how to solve it and i've kind of i've always had one with me since then so um you know now i got a collection of like 60 rubik's cubes like i'm, I'm a weird dude like <laughs> You, you, you I, could have been a goalie then like you, yeah, been, right? you, you check all the boxes <laughs> i would have been a perfect goalie having 60 years he was just a weird guy but <laughs> no i uh no so i can solve it in about my best time is like 19 seconds i figured out how to solve it wow so, yeah but i mean a lot of it a lot of it is just kind of just flicking around when i'm sitting there doing nothing and um you know kind of seeing different ways on how to solve it and uh, a lot of it i've kind of taught myself um I learned like this beginner's method on YouTube one time. And then after that, I just been kind of teaching myself new tricks to figure out how to get it a little bit faster. Um, so can I, you do I, it behind your back? Cause that that's the real trick. I know somebody who can do that. And I, I don't understand. Can you do it like where it's behind your back and you're not even looking? Yeah. So I get to certain parts and I can learn how I know how to do that, but I can't like look at it while it's scrambled and do it. Sure. Okay. I can okay. get to certain parts and I can do it behind my back, but I have this problem where when I try to learn something, I try to like be the best person in the world <laughs> at it. And and my roommate, Johnny Sorensen hates me for it. Cause every time like he teaches me or like tells me to do something, I always do it until I'm better than him. At it. <laughs> and so, yeah, he doesn't like that too much, but um, yeah, that was, that was kind of my problem with Rubik's cube. So I, I didn't really leave my room for a couple of months <laughs> and to learn that thing. I took the stickers off. That's how I solved it. And I still <laughs> yeah. am like, I'm like, this is, I can't do this. I get too, I get too mad or upset about it. Um, yeah. you know, so have you taught any of your teammates? Like, have you taught your, taught your lineies? Like can Sammy Walker do a Rubik's no, cube now I, yeah. or what? Yeah. I taught Johnny Sorensen how to do it. And now, now he's kind of hooked on it too. And, um, <laughs> yeah, we got, we got like six guys. So Colin Schmidt on our team also knew how to do it already. Mm-hmm. And, you know, he taught a guy. And so now we got like five guys that know how to do it. And, um, you know, where every time we get in the bus to, to take a road trip, we'll all look at each other and then we'll just take our Rubik's cube out of our pocket <laughs> together. And it's, 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 it's a lot of fun. I mean, you know, we go to meals and you look in somebody's pocket, they got a big square in their pocket and you can like, <laughs> the Rubik's cube. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, that, that's definitely helped our team kind of grow a little bit was, yeah. was kind of teaching the guys and, um, you know, having something else to talk about other than hockey. Right. It's a new team bonding thing. I mean, you know, we should let the yeah. wild know that this is what you got to yeah. do. We got to, are you guys having competitions too. then? Like, yeah. are you going to, yeah. Like little team competitions. You got to end up doing that. Like a whole, whole thing. Oh yeah. We had, we had a, a meal uh, last week in regionals and Colin Schmidt and Carl Fish were kind of going back and forth on their timer on their phone <laughs> faster. And they're all, they're both within like two seconds of each other every time. And they wouldn't leave the table until they got under, under a minute. And so, it was kind of funny. I mean, everybody was already leaving. They're sitting there in the table doing the Rubik's cube. So <laughs> I, I love it. We're good. That's just now, now I, I feel like I have to go relearn. Yeah. It's been a while since I've tried to do one. I think I need to put it back to the test. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, my, my roommate, Johnny Sorensen, he always, when I was teaching him, I would, I would always do it really fast because he would get super frustrated because he didn't <laughs> keep up with it. And I'd be like, all you got to do is this. And I would make like 10 moves and he wouldn't be able to like keep up with it. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I understood that really well. <laughs> You know, any other hidden, like any other weird, quirky things that you just love to do that your cousin shared with you or something that you were like, Hey, this is kind of fun. Like yo-yoing. I feel like yo-yoing and Rubik's cubes go together. One. Right. I feel like I would want to learn that. There I remember go. we used to have a yo-yo guy that would come to our school in elementary school every year and he yeah. would sell his yo-yos and I would always get them. <laughs> well, I don't, do like I the don't walking really dog care. and like the little thing, like the little tricks. That was yeah. That was cool. yeah, yeah. Walk the dog. Yeah. yeah. No, I go. don't. I mean, I, I'm sure I do. I'm a weird guy, but I don't, I don't really have any other that are weirder than a Rubik's Cube, I don't think. That's all right. I love it. Well, Bryce, thank you so much for the time. You are awesome. Cheering for the Gophers in that game against mm-hmm. Minnesota State and then naturally against maybe Michigan. Who knows what happens <laughs> there. But uh, for the championship, bring it home, buddy. No pressure. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey, guys, this is producer Fred. I just want to ask everyone to go out there and spread the word about Bar Down Beauties. Leave us a like, share, thumbs up, review, you name it, we want to hear from you. Find us on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and of course, your favorite podcast app. We're back. What a fun guy Bryce is. Like I said, I did a story on his brothers for Minnesota Hockey Journal, and they were awesome. His mom, Kathy, I got to chat with. His dad, yeah. Michael, they're good family, but Bryce might be my favorite. I'm just going to say, and I'm not saying yeah. that to each one of them. I think Bryce is probably my favorite. 
I, I think I'd have to agree. I was at St. Cloud when Johnny played there. We were there. I think our time was almost exactly the same um, from freshman to senior. Except then, you didn't go play for like the LA Kings or anything. I like did that, not right? do that. Correct. Okay. Um, yeah. Not as cool as Johnny Brodzinski, but we no. did go to the same school. And then um, Easton Brodzinski came in. He's still playing for the Huskies, but mm-hmm. he came in at the end of my college career. Um, I went to, I was a, a, a super senior, by the way. Um, yeah. So he came in at the end of my college career. So uh, two awesome guys there. And nice to get a chance to chat with Bryce. Uh, kid with a good personality and hoping he can help the Gophers uh, win a championship here. Again, shout out to Brian Deutsch, SID of the Gophers. Good human all in all. Love to rib him uh, and shout out for that Rubik's Cube <laughs> tidbit because that's that's the content I need. Yes. Uh, note to all future SIDs and PR people. Just feed me <laughs> those things. I love it. Um, now let's get into segment three, up for debate. Alexis, you went with uh, which area do you think the Wild have the greatest chance of relapsing in? Goaltending special teams or compete level. Why don't you start us off? So these were some of the big quote unquote issues that I saw a lot of people talking about when the wild were in their slump. And now that they're out of the slump, I'm really curious what people think is maybe not permanently fixed, but maybe just has a bandaid over it. I personally, and this, the game, so we're recording this on Friday Wild played the penguins Thursday night, this penguins game solidified this for me. Special teams to me still really concerns me for the Minnesota wild. I really believe like this team, you don't have to worry about the compete level. They're, they're not going to be playing their a game every single night, game in and game out, especially at this point in the season. But this team has shown us time and time again, that they will compete. They will give their all night in and night out. And it might not, the products might not be there, but they will try their damnedest to, to give it a hundred percent. And I really think that the goaltending has had a resurgence. I really love the addition of flurry. And I think we've got a good tandem here with those two. So special teams to me is the biggest issue because especially come playoff time, you penalties are so rarely called in playoff hockey because a players tighten up. They're not playing as sloppy. They're not taking as many penalties and B officials. Um, not that they're more lenient, but they're not going to call some maybe of the softer calls you see called in the regular season. So power plays and penalty kills are, are fewer, um, um, in the playoffs. So That means that if you're not good on special teams, if you can't score a power play goal, if you can't kill a penalty, those can sometimes be the deciding goal in a playoff game. And I, time and time again, the wild have shot themselves in the foot with special teams, whether that, I mean, they went on a stretch where they couldn't kill a penalty to save their lives. And even, even, you know, last night um, against the penguins, they were taking some dumb penalties where it's like, why are you putting yourself in this position against the team? Who's just going to make you pay for, I mean, Jake Gensel had a goal eight seconds into a power play. It's like, don't, don't put yourself in that position. So I'm most worried about special teams just because it seems to be, even when the wild have been playing well, that seems to have been an issue at certain points in the season. And I do think that it teams who can't figure that out come playoff time really do suffer from it. So that's my biggest area of concern that I, I could see a relapse in um, Jesse. Is there an area that still uh, possibly concerns you? I mean, to me, special teams is kind of a moot point anyway, because I don't think they've ever like they've gotten better. They just don't suck at it. Right. Like I, I sure. wouldn't say that they've necessarily improved and I don't expect them to be, unless you got Chris Kreider on the power play, who apparently <laughs> that's all he does. Right. Like, I don't know. And, and penalties are going to happen and the penalty kills fine. Like he's made some changes. So I don't know that I would even necessarily consider that. So to replace it, I'm going to slide in a, a, a curveball here. Um, my concern would be that there's more defensive lapses. Again, I pointed to that as the reason that you saw goaltending as an issue. And now even put aside the fact that John Merrill is probably going to be out for a bit of time. Um, and you know, you got Alex Goligoski slotting in, but I think Kulikov didn't look so sharp the other night against Pittsburgh. And so I'm more concerned about the defense starting to really struggle, whether that be from injury, whether that just be from misplays or, or, you know, playing almost too tight sometimes. Cause I think that's where you saw the success in Minnesota early on was the fact that they were able to push the play. Right. I I kept crediting that, like the defense is finally jumping in and you saw Jared Spurgeon do a little bit of that last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's the one that started that game tying goal for Kirill Kaprizov by plucking it off in the neutral zone, but defense is the one area that I'm just like, they've tightened up and they've made it good. But again, are they good enough? Right. Can they continue to stop this? And again, right now they've been playing good. I like Mm -hmm. how they've been playing, but that's my area that I worry holes start to falter again, again, whether that be from injury or whether that just be from sloppy play. Um, that's the one area that I am concerned might relapse and, and could the, the promising thing is I like the tandem now, guys. I was just going to ask you that. So do you think that if the wild defense starts to lapse, like they, we have seen them, especially in that slump, do you think 
the goaltending tandem now, whether that's Flurry or Talbot and Net, is strong enough to overcome that? Or do you think that would then push them into some more bad play like we saw earlier? How do you think it would go now? Great question. And again, I have not been kidnapped. I like this goaltending <laughs> tandem. My, that was my, a great my tweet, preaching, by the way. <laughs> so good. My <laughs> preaching was because I didn't like the tandem of Talbot and Kacknan. Mm-hmm. Flurry and Talbot, I like. Talbot has stepped up his play to not lose his spot to Mark Andre mm-hmm. Fleury, right? So I, I do, I have more confidence in this tandem if okay. the defense lapses because I've seen more from Cam too. I've sure. seen him make some of those bigger saves that he just wasn't making when the defense was down. And again, Capo wasn't getting the time. And when he was, he was he wasn't as great either, where I don't think you have Mark Andre Fleury dealing with that. Sure. Um, so yeah, no, I think I have confidence moving forward in the goaltenders as they are, even if that means alternating them back mm-hmm. and forth, which <laughs> Dean might do up until playoffs. But yeah, I think the defense is is more my concern. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean I think the relapse would cause them to lose more games, mm-hmm. but it just is going to make you rely on the goaltending, which is going to be a good thing, I think, because everybody knows again in the playoff, that's what matters. So if you can, yeah. you know, maybe start to, it'll might test your goaltending a little bit more and we might get a glimpse as to what we really have and how strong it really is. But no, I guess it doesn't leave me as concerned to have the puck slip through some holes in the defense to the goalies, knowing the two that would be back there. Well, and to your point with defense too, even if you have faith in your goalies to make the saves, um, no matter how difficult or easy the, the save is, if your defense isn't playing at the top of its game, that means you're spending more time defending because you're probably having issues getting the puck out of the zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, the four check is probably um, forcing you into plays you don't want to be making because you can't get it out. Um, and that means you have less opportunities offensively because you're spending so much time in your own end. So to your point, Jesse, when goals in the playoffs are hard to come by, if you're spending, you know, 65, 70% of the game defending, you don't have much time left to try to even get offensive chances. Even if once you get into the zone um, Mm -hmm. and, and defending a lot wears you down. I mean, it's, it's hard to spend most of a game defending your, your, both your forwards and defensemen are going to get tired. Your goalie's going to get tired from facing so many shots. So I agree that even if you have faith in the goalies to make the saves, it really just makes everybody's job a little bit more difficult when defense is making mistakes and everyone's trying to make up for it and, and not exert so much of their energy in the defensive zone. So I think that's a good point. Thank you. (laughs) Keep that, keep that, (laughs) run that Uh, tape back. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Again, shout out to Bryce Brodzinski for taking time to chat with us ahead of the frozen four coming up this weekend. Uh, Brian Deutsch, thank you for setting that up. Still, still waiting for Matsko. Just saying. Um, but yeah, yeah was that, he on beyond the pot again? What's that? That's like his second. You know what? I didn't want to bring that. it up. I didn't want to bring it up, but I might bring it up. But uh, Molesky, we have beef with you now. <laughs> and Pat McGlady. Yeah, we're just gonna keep calling in a fan line to get our, our due. So that's what's gonna happen. Um, no, but thank you to all of you for listening. Shout out to Better Edge, B E T T R Edge dot com. Code Buttes B E A U T S. A free ten bucks to enter into weekly competition against Alexis and I. Tuesday, beat the Butte against me. Thursday. Thursday against Alexis. Come try to take our money or win $12.50. The choice is yours. <laughs> a win's Make a win's right a win. <laughs> a win's a win. Uh, shout out to sodastick.com for all their sweet gear. They came out with a wildflower in honor of Mark Andre Fleury. So love that. Code Bardown Buttes will get you Bardown Beauties, excuse me, Bardown Beauties, 15% off. Um, and shout out to Jim Beam. We love it. We drink it. You know, it's patio season, right? Let's get it some is. good. We are Jim approaching Beam patio, patio season. Drinks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, shout out to all of you. Shout out to Talk North for featuring us on their network. And uh, don't forget to rate, subscribe, like, engage with us on the YouTube comments. We'd love to see that. Um, love to hear your thoughts on how the Wild's playing, on uh, whether the Gophers make it, and all of that good stuff. Because hockey, baby, it's the best time of the year. So let's go. Have a great rest of your day and a great week. Bye. Bye.